May we remind you that for the convenience of those patrons who prefer not to smoke, seating areas on the right-hand side of this auditorium have been designated as no smoking areas. Your cooperation is appreciated. tragic, needless accident. But why did it happen? The driver checks the traffic on his right, the road seems to be clear, and he pulls out. But if we look again from the driver's angle, we can see his problem. Visibility isn't good, but if only he'd checked again, he would have seen the motorcyclist approaching. That car driver will be more careful next time. For the motorcyclist, there isn't going to be a next time. So motorists, be particularly careful at junctions. Think once, think twice, think five. <laughs> Take a snap of them. Hello. They packed a lot of insulation in here. I hear too. Must be a good bit quieter. They've changed the suspension. New headlamps. One thing hasn't changed. What's that? Ah, oh, look. The new Ford Cortina. We couldn't make it better to look at, so we made it better to ride in. And better to drive. On the shortest trips, beware of the blunders. Clunk, click. Today, Mrs. Blunders is off to the shops. So naturally, she's got a lot on her mind. After all, she mustn't forget anything. Now, what about a nice bit of fish with white sauce? Oh, no, no, we had fish yesterday. Oh, dear. Oh, look, Wilson's have got a sale. <laughs> that reminds me. Uh, ooh, I must phone the vet. Spaghetti with Brussels sprouts. No, no, no I'll, I'll go to the butcher's first. Oh, bother, they're closed. Well, it'll just have to be fish. You'll never notice. You might meet Mrs. Blunders driving down the high street. And no matter how well you think you know the road, no matter how sensibly you drive, Mrs. Blunders could be round the next corner. That's why you should always wear your seatbelt. Even on the shortest trips, beware of the blunders. Clunk, click. And straight into episode six, welcome aboard. This is the taking, carrying on from episode five there on that sill. I left you last night with this sill. And now what we're doing, I'm waiting for some parts just for the back, the tail end of the, the wheel tub repair piece. I'm waiting for that to come in. So um, before we stitch this back on, before we do some welding on it, we're going to be prepping the inside of the sill area. Uh, just for a little diversion, I'm going to fix this uh, corroded bung 
whole thing here. We've got a donation piece arrived from Mark. We thank him for that, Mark in York has uh, packaged up and sent in the post uh, a nice piece of kit for me in the form of some metal. So what we're going to do, clean the metal up, heat this area up and then scribe out a square underneath of under seal so that it doesn't burn when I, when I mig it. So I'm just going to heat this metal now with a, the gun. Then we'll be cleaning up the repair piece ready for a, a butt weld job and we'll take you through that. So it's welding on this video as well as promised. First of all let's get some heat on and uh, heat this patch. And that will enable me to scrape the under seal. I say under seal, it's a sound deadening patch. So let's heat that up now. And that will get us the, the bitumen pads underneath here. That'll get us uh, soft so we can start to peel that away, ready for the welding so we're not burning when it welds. I could spin the car but I'm, I'm not going to be under here, underneath here long enough to spin it. So um, I'm just going to go from underneath and then cut out from the top. Let me scrape that bitumen pad off. That's now cleaned up, just got the under seal off that uh, Now I'm just going to... For this you can either um, tack that on, what we're going to do, we need to, uh, we're going to cut the exact right shape for this so it just drops into the hole for the butt weld. So the butt weld is basically just leaving a, a small one mil gap around for you to fill with weld rather than over plating it which gets um, can get moisture underneath and it can rot back out. We just drop that so it's totally flush fitting so it's going to lower itself in. I'm just picking the best use of the metal, that's the biggest area there, so that's the widest piece of the metal. I'll just cover as much as I can, line that hole up there like that. Not critical, but just to get it in the right place. And then I'm going to use a weld through primer as just as a mask. And this is just to mask the shape. This is a copper weld through primer, it just means that it won't get in the way once I'm, I'm welding. So I've just made the, the pattern of that and now we'll get the the one milli cutting disc and we'll carefully cut that shape out. There'll be some overcuts in the corners, you just backfill them with weld. So slice that out now and then that'll lower into place and we'll get the magnet on it and we'll hold it with a magnet and then we'll get some tacks on and we're ready to uh, put our first piece of uh, metal back into this car and do that repair piece. So if I get the grinder set up, let's cut that out now and I'll put you on the tripod and let's do that. Onto the tripod we go. Okay, my goggles are on and my grinder disc is ready. I'm going to be very careful. One mil cutting disc. Be real careful when you can slice your fingers off. Here we go along that line. to insert, oh, I think it may may fit, it may not. I was that way, wasn't I? You can easily trim, but it's best to get it over at first. You can overcut the whole thing in one operation, which I have done in the past. Um, but I thought I'll just do it this way. So let's take a little edge off that, and then we're ready to go there. We're just a couple of mil wide. Let's just see. Okay, no problem. A little trim 
and we'll be right to, good to go there. Right, that's fitting where I want it to be now so I'm going to just, what I'll do, I'll get a, a couple of tacks in each corner then I'll just run the blade slightly in the gap to give me uh, something for the weld to drop into so I'm just going to get it nice and even okay so I'm um, going to hold that with a tack first weld going on just tack there and then I'll just run I'll tack all four corners and I'll just run the blade just in just to open up a, a one mil hole I've already got it this side but just a little bit wider here for the weld to go into and then we'll, I'll set the welder up. Right, some tack welds in and then just cleaned up, ready for take the weld. Now, when you get it really, really clean metal and your weld will go a lot better. So just flat wheeled around the edge where the tacks were so it's nice uh, and I've managed to knock it so it's totally flush, just using the hammer, tapping it from underneath till that's a flush fit there. And now we put the rest of the weld on top. So we're gonna go down this side first and then along the other side. So weld it on again. Now. Right, well I flipped the car on its side, I found it a bit easier, just going uphill, so first weld's in. Okay, so we've gone off, there was a little bit at the top corner, which where the angled blade was over sliced, so I've just, I just carried on on that run and fit, finished it off. So um, we're done there now, that first patch is on, just remains to just grind it down and get that weld looking flat, <clears throat> a bit flatter. There's a little bit of uh, smoke coming through on the welder, that's just the edge of the paint that's burning off. And it caused a little bit of spatter as you can see there, but uh, clean welds most of the way round. So we're okay there. There's a couple of little holes you can just see through, picking through, just at the edges there. And um, I'll just go over those. I'll put a torch at the back and make sure I've got every bit and flat that back. So that's the first patch on. Just want some um, flattening and then priming back in. We'll just take the flat wheel on it and we'll, 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 we'll neaten it up now. So we're done there good on that one I can over braze it if I want if you really want to I did that on swampy where I over braze the patches it's that equivalent to putting filler in it metal filler in it I suppose so that's that we've got this one to do next we've got a little square patch to put in there we'll do that next I think while we're on the welding thing all right so carrying on with the welding then that's where we're up to at the moment I'm going to cut a patch of metal for this and I'm also going to flat wheel down that we can use a grinding disc or we can use the flat wheels and just uh, take it out and see how we go. Okay, on with me, uh, grinding back the weld now. So, grinding back the weld. for you uh, a bigger plate's gonna have to go in I've done that small I did the small uh, bung plate but what I found is when I was welding it I noticed got the screwdriver from the inside not from outside it was clean on the outside loads of pinholes so I've had to cut a much bigger section out now so we're going for just some 1.2 steel and we're doing a stitch stitch weld I've cut a template out the exact fit so you can see we're really closely in there now some people say you should leave a one mil gap but it's a lot trickier if you've never done a, a, a butt weld this size before so I'm playing it safe and I've just got it, it right up there are some gaps and I'm just gonna first get that plate positioned in a very snug fit and then lots of stitch welds in there and we can take those off after the idea is it's completely flush is what you've got to watch you don't get it flush then we come to grind off you grind through the metal and everything so you've just got to get this really really this face really smooth and when you're doing your stitches go opposite sides and just let it cool down because it'll, it'll warp otherwise so i'm just going in a bigger plate and then we're going to cut out 
the original bung, and, not the original bung, but the one I just used, and, and it's going to have to go back in, so we'd have to double weld, but it should all be seamless when we're done. You shouldn't even see that. Once I've ground this down, it should be a continuous line there. Um, so we'll have a look at that and see how good we can do it. I'm just catching up on my welding skills, but a long time off the welder. But uh, we're going all right so far. It's a bit close this, it had rotted right across into this area. But there's no more, I've checked the rest of the floor and we look okay. So we're solid up to that point. Um, as I say, we're just getting this plate to go in now and I'm going along. So I'll just tap it in flush here. It does fit. I just had to keep measuring and measuring so that plate just went into the square hole, okay? Right, let me get some more stitch welds on there now. Okay, I'm on the inside now and I'm just knocking the sheet and just scooping it with a hammer. I'm just brushing it like that, just making both these faces perfectly parallel. You can see that white line there and I've run my finger across and just feel if, it, if it's raised or not. That's totally flush. So now some more tacks in the back to keep that totally flush and parallel. You see that, that line? there how parallel that is it's important to keep it that's what your weld's going to fill in between gaps not too wide so you don't get a blow through just enough uh, gap there to get your tacks in and then you just go in between the tacks later so plate nice and flush fitting weld starting to come through this side now and we're flush there if i run my finger across that plate is completely level in the floor pan it's not raised or buckled there's no distortion gone into that the floor pan stayed straight and that's how you just keep stitching and between this weld all the time and then we'll build that up once we get that nicely secured we can put a bit more weld on it okay so very flush fitting plate to repair that rot that's the last of the rot there might be a little bit here let's see we'll clean that up after and see it might be okay this is the worst area see how the extent of the rust has come out it's water's come down the bulkhead filled the floor pan and rotted it that's what's happened it's not gone from the outside that's why i didn't spot it earlier on and that's why I only cut a small square out initially now it's a much larger section luckily it's not on any ribs luckily it was in a flat area so there's no need to form the metal it's a straight piece of 1.2 and all we'll do is we'll intercut another hole into it in the right position and uh, with it not being nice clean metal as well we'll stitch another piece in that'll go in very well once all the welds are dressed up it should be reasonably invisible Okay, so back to the outside. Now I've just been tapping from the inside to get the plate, as I say, totally flush and an even uh, probably half a mil gap there. Okay, outside we go. Okay, I'm just closing up on the last of the, the spot welds here now. I'm just doing a little test to make sure this panel's still perfectly flush. You can see that line a bit close to the chassis edge, but we're okay. We're working just about get in there and finish that. So I'm running the chisel along and making sure that we're still flush. If it wasn't, it catches the end of the chisel and you can feel it, so you just slightly tap it. But that closing piece now is flush, so we'll finish off with some more welds on that, and then we'll go in to fill the weld. Right, that's all the, uh, the the weld ground down. Pretty uh, good finish. A couple little craters there, just a few. I don't think they're going to matter. It's got Gravitex on it. There's no light shining through it. I've had the torch at the back, so we're good to go there. That's a nice patch in. There's a little bit of a little warp just there. I can just feel a ripple. And here where I, I had to knock the corner in just dishes in a bit but I'm not perfect but I'm, I'm getting better on my welding so that's a nice flush flush repair okay and I think it's quite neat the other side we'll go and have a look at the other side see how it's looking uh, probably not much to buzz down on the other side and then now we'll get this there's our bung cut out from kindly donated by Mark so we'll just draw a line through the two bungs there to get our centre dead on and then we can hang that and then we'll cut out again and, and drop this in. If I, could, if I could punch the hole, I would punch the hole. I believe you can use a socket, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, butt weld this in. So it's another butt welding operation. I'm about to do that now. Okay, so I'm going to chop this, spray over it, then slice in with the one mil slicing disc, 
and use a magnet just to hold it in place get some tacks on and more of the same again not as much this time a bit of a, an easier one than the big square okay so that's going in there and then we're done on that repair Right, that piece is in, it's nice and flush, so we'll start getting the tacks on there now, then we'll, we'll stitch it in.
shit. go. You're bonded, you're plating, you're good to rock. That's nice and neat and the Gravitex will cover any it's a little, few little indentations, can you see those? We shine the torch through and just have a look, see if any light's coming in. We get the torch, there might be because I've not gone over this one, but we go in, just shine it on. Yeah, you can see those couple. There we go. One, two, three, four little pins. I'll just touch them with a the MIG now, and that's it. I'll touch them little pins with a MIG, and then um, that's it, it's done. Then we'll just flat back them little repairs. So you can see them. There's one, a couple more there. Okay. But on the whole, I only went at that really quick actually, and that's where I had to hit it with a hammer. So I'm gonna actually just put some fill in there. That's the only little bit, just a little bit of cosmetic. I'm just gonna bring that in. It's solid, but it's just I could knock it out, but you risk cracking the plates and disturbing it how it is, you know. So I don't want to really knock it out. I might try gently tapping it first, just see what happens. But other than that, we're good to go there. Right, let's move on to something else now. Uh, probably the wheel tub, so tomorrow we'll see us on the wheel tub, for now it's over. Okay, that's your, uh, your inside view, pretty neat, it's actually very easy to just flat that down, the weld on this side, <clears throat> all penetrated, you can see that, and there's no big uh, piles of weld or anything, it's pretty much just already flush, so I don't actually think there's anything to do to it, we'll just uh, paint it, and um, the underseal on the bond goes in and that's it. Actually, don't even need to to bring the weld down. I'll dress it up anyway. But um, that's that's really neat. Pretty good that. Okay, over and out for this uh, section six carries on though tomorrow. So we're all done. Take you around before we close. Now the compressor's off. That compressor was running, wasn't it? Okay, we'll be all right with that.
looks like it's that way. Just got to work out where to get the cut now. It'll be right up to the edge, I think, because that's dishing in. This is a different tub than that one. This one's a dished in tub. That's a flat. I'm not getting that curved down. So I've just got to get it right. We're all right here. Could be quite tricky though. Might be better putting round like that. I think I'm going to make it sort of and go in like that. Now it might be better with me nibbling tool rather than the angle grinder going around. I still can find the, the air nibble and we'll air nibble that out. Your little air nib were handy for doing your repairs, that's a pretty good tool. You just about get that there, now if that goes in, I'll get it. We'll drop that in, we should get it, so we'll mark now with the paint best that we can. We'll try and whoop, drop that bad boy and pop in there. Just double check it. Yeah, that'll go. Right, we've got some paint, we'll mark it up. Patch in. We're just going to start now. We'll get a tack and tap it up and get it level all the way around there. And then just, we'll hammer it slightly and we'll just get that in. So, we're good to go there. Okay, tack well's next. Okay, fixed it. Right, we've got it there. Now we're doing other areas. But with an approved used Audi, there are more. 145 checks by Audi trained technicians. 12 try for the top. Warranty. Yeah. A 750 to 1,500 pound deposit contribution on selected models. And this 6% representative is under two years old. The music is always there. Solutions personal contract. Might have to file it off. It's probably just a bit too. Got it there. We get one in the junction 16 for Craig Hall. Yeah. Questions back to junction 13 for the for Ready? Yeah. It's backed up to junction 2. All lanes have been reopened. Okay. Next. We're probably all right here already. Actually, already done, aren't we? Yeah. Spot on, it's just that corner. All along that line is spot on. Oh, Except ready? for that corner, yeah. 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 One more. Hold on. Okay. 
okay. That just needs. Yeah, it's just that. Just, that needs to come out a little bit from the inside, and then it's flush there. Yeah, I'm not, I look like it's dead. Spot on. Nice. Right, coming up. Nice. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, just needs to grind and probably a bit round a bit round here too. Yeah. Needs oh, it. In there. Just in up just one more, hold on. Need to do a bit of the grind on that. Yeah. No matter what yeah. back in. I might get the edge of the angle grind on. Yeah. Yeah. Tricky with the grind grind. They might just be able to touch it. Friday, the day of the run. I don't know. I don't know. Took the edge off there, just going as flush as we can. This should tap in now. Look at that. Right, it's got it, it's just holding it on the end of that well. But other than that, we're in. Right, a little bit more to do, just there, isn't it? Just there. Yeah, we might get it with this. Spot on. Right, so ah. a little bit in. Bit rough there. Yeah, I can get that with a weld as long as the profile's right. Yeah. Get that with a weld now. Still on, yeah. So we'll just finish that off. I've got way around there. It's going like that and it's not catching the edge, so you know your, your profile's exactly right. And then we'll just fill in all the little welds like we did earlier on, then your patches in. What a couple of tacks at the top. Ready? Yeah. We want two more. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Nice. So, we can keep going if we want. We'll keep going. Ready? Yeah. Few more in down there, and we'll uh, we'll call it a day for that. Just for today, just I'd like to get the get the shape in. I'm happy with the way that's looking already. Looking good. So a couple more more in here, and we're out of it. Yeah. Next week we'll carry on filling in, we'll grind back, same as we did with the other floor patch. And that's that big area done. These can be nigged up with a copper bar at the back. We might have to do one more patch like this, but we'll use the, uh, the air chisel, the angle grinder, the paint to make the shapes, and we're good to go. We'll see you next week. So, over and out for now. As you can see, we've tidied up. What am I? Look, you like what we've done with the plate? Well, here we have a posted area. Nice. Uh, Boobs out of the top there. All looking good. Double hit if you want it. Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. New generation in auto refinishing products. Super, so we'll see you all next week. Alright, just carrying on with the boot floor. Still on part six, everybody. Got some more plates in. Got that one finished off. Just a little bit, of dress, a bit more dressing to do on that uh, teardrop repair there. And then moving on to the... Um, the pin holes so we're plug welding those up there's one on, on the go at the moment there's some filler hidden in the back of here so i've just uh, sanded that out we've got the copper bar going on thanks to kenny b and the, the youtube crew for the suggestion on the copper bar i had heard about that one and um yeah you're right it's a good it's a good one a little piece of uh 22 mil uh, copper pipe squashed in a vice and two holes drilled in it and what i've been doing is just screw it up over the holes and the screw holes that you leave you just uh, you can mig them up without the copper bar and uh, afterwards so uh, and a repair like this clean up this side so we don't get any fumes coming through and there's some filler on there then screw the copper bar up and then just slowly work your way outwards in and get yourself um, 
the holes filled. We'll, we'll do that in a minute. There's one I'm just about to sand down and we've got to get the bar in on that one again. There's the teardrop one which obviously wasn't done with a copper bar, that was a whole piece in. Same's got to happen here for that, that repair. I'm going to cut that rust out and get that repaired. Quite a bit of time going into the fixing up that boot. Uh, there's a lot of pepper holes in it. Those shotgun holes I told you about. So we're going to get this bar and we're going to screw that in up there and finish off that hole. This one just um, spattered on me because of the filler I didn't spot. So I'm just going to grind that back off, clean that and just go over that again then get that hole and that one. We'll just do it there. See that round one? And um, then I'll work on that one. So we've got one, two, three more areas. That will probably just mig in. And then for the biggie here where we cut the metal out and then that's the boot done. Then we'll flip the shell and I'll get in and dress the welds up on the inside. <coughs> They'll need a skim. There's no way around it. A light skim on. It's going to have to go over there. These repairs. Probably not on this side because of the Gravitex will coat that. But inside the boot to get the finish we will have to... Um, Put some filler in the boot to get the finish that we want. You're not going to hide those repairs. So I'll carry on with the boot. And then uh, once I've done that, I think I'm going to head up and start making the plate for this uh, corner of the sill there. And start getting that area done. And I'll probably just um, remove the rest of that under seal as well. That's got to be done. But uh, let's just get the boot finished. So carrying on, we'll get this screwed on there now two tech screws up screw the copper at the back fire the welder up and then let's let's finish and dress up all this and get it looking smart so we can we can cross that off the list so uh, get me drill now and fix this up and we'll get going got a new tool as well a nice little black and decker power file that saves me having to fire the compressor up from me air powered um power file which is noisy and probably arguably not as maneuverable as this uh, when you take into account the flexi air line hose you're, uh, you're, you're restricted this a little bit heavier than holding the the air tool but it's pretty good and you can get the belts at the right money for these the belts I was struggling to get for the air tool one this was 60 quid from Machine Mart you can get them as little as 30 pounds not a Black & Decker ones but you can get sort of uh, Sealy's own I think are down at 45 I'm not sure but this one come with two year warranty and uh, had a good motor on it and uh, a nice feel to it. And, uh, it. It makes light work of cleaning up your welds. If you're for really big monster welds, maybe go in with your angle grinder and a grinding disc first and then finish off finish off with the, uh, the belt sander. Just makes uh, maneuverability really easy. I got in there just to clean that filler up and just glance it over it. And it, it uh, gets you nice and clean, dead quick. Imagine trying to get your angle grinder in there, you're going to be digging holes in it. You could have flattened it by hand, but why bother when you've got the power file to do it for you? So power file is another good tool to uh, get in, in, in your uh, collection. Enough of that, let's get some welding on the go. We'll see you when that's, that's filled. I'll just uh, cut to this looking neat. Let's see how neat we can get that to look. It looks messy at the moment, it's spattered, it's hit the filler. So let's get the copper bar on and then um, fill those two free holes there and then the two screw holes that I leave once the bar, copper bars off just mig them and grind back so you should cut to this looking neat and done let's see what you think when I've done it five set well give me give me half an hour to do that let's see what we can do maybe less over and out till we okay so I'm back before I said I would be uh, just showing you the welds before I take them down. So it goes in pretty flush. Okay, uh, that one's a bit high, but I'll flat them off now. The bar can come off. Then I'll just put the two um, MIG welds in where the screw holes were. Then that's ready for, for sanding down. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll show you that getting sanded down. Just uh, a little note you notice my walls are white. Okay, so I'm gonna, you get a lot of uh, weld flash bouncing about it's what I what I do I've got a, a hood over me welding jacket which protects my neck area and the sides of my face because you will get um, sore eyes from the uh, flashes off the white walls really what I should have here is a black 
panel or shield around me which I might make up actually and uh, just so I don't have to keep wearing the hood it's just basically I've just got a, a, a jacket on top it's not the best thing really uh, because it could catch fire okay so that's not that's not a good idea we need something fireproof I've just done it now but I'm not going to be doing it again after I've done this we're not professionals here as you know but we're trying I've got a leather jacket here which I could use that's non-flammable but I'm sensing flashes off the walls so what I'm probably going to do I'm going to get some hardboard paint it black and just put two panels up so we don't get them flashes back mm. I've not had archive yet but uh, it's possible if it just catches me so we don't want that happening I have been wearing the, uh, the, the gauntlets that's very important you keep your hands covered and ideally your arms so just some welding tips there but um, let's get those grounded down okay we got it we got it got it got it got it got it let's have a look yep we're good to go you can see where it catches the light there's little imperfections and stuff that's why I just got to skim it but solid through there it's not going to go anywhere so that's that patch done so where are we we said we'll get to that we've done that uh, that one needs a few little more little spots in it just to, and then another grind over just for them pinholes I'm pretty much done with them ah oh, there's a bad boy let's get that one uh, let's get that one and let's get that one a couple of the holes to mig up where that repair patch piece and then we'll save the best till last right let me just do that I'll cut straight to it when it's done not much point you uh, watching that we're just more of the same so let's just uh, cut ahead and get those finished okay plate on I'm ready to weld just showing you that it's cleaned up the area plate over with your flattened down copper tube thanks Kenny 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 B down it goes other welds getting cleaned up there so round this side I'm trying to go pan as slow as I can and then you see the tech screws coming through and that's flush up to the copper so we'll cut back just let the weld pull go around and work our way inwards and pull back and we should be right for that one so let's weld that one up now welding torch is ready and we're off Right, come and see what you think I think we're all done that's that patch in now that's that one in that's that one in okay so all you all you're in and now we save the best till last got to do another butt weld job on this one same as we did down here and then a small repair there see just a little bit of weld and a bit of shaping to go on that and that's it, tub is done on this side and then we'll flip it and clean up the inside. Well, um, for now, we're going to get that patch cut. We have donut booties over here. So, uh, yep, we've already started to prepare that little area there. There's just enough metal on that one. It's, that one's also started to rust, but there's just enough uh, to get what we need in here. We're going to keep it to the minimum cut. So it's the air tool out and we'll cut the cut the shape right air tool out now for cutting the shape out of there
Right, I'm just going to get the air nibbler now and just get a, a, a finer cut on that. I've just chopped an oversized piece out. So we're going to go around there now. Let's just make sure we don't cut too little off. No, we're restricted to just that edge. So we can do that. Okay. Get that in about there. Right, air nibbler and we'll nibble out. Let's see how it goes. Okay, over clamps, I'm ready. Let's tap it down and then let's get the spray can on there. Keep it square on. Totally parallel if you can. Don't forget around those edges. And get it as accurate as we can. A little bit there. I want to go under it. Okay, that's it. So I'll take that off, let that dry first so we don't smudge it, and then get the air chisel on that one. You're just going to be real careful with the air chisel and make sure, or the air nibbler rather, and make sure we get the nibbler just in the right place to leave just a small millimetre gap. It doesn't matter if it's a bit of a tight fit. You just want to aim for just getting it just to move in and out like that. So. We're nearly ready to get some tacks on that soon. Right, we are ready to nibble. Now go for that edge and then we're done. So nibble is ready. This is the tricky bit. Just got to get it just right, okay? Let's give it a shot. I might set you up on the tripod. Right, I've got, I've got the main uh, chunk of the metal out and I've left just enough so I'm going to get the our new super duper belt sander and finish off accurately up to the spray line and then just keep putting the piece in, going around with the belt sander until it slots in. It's better than just going too far with the, because uh, you can't get the accuracy with the nibble, you can get a big chunk out but it's hard to nibble right up to the edge so we'll finish off with the belt sander on that now. So I'm just going to get the, the, the sander in and just start trimming it in. Right, we're in. A couple of gaps, screw up there, but the weld will get it. So I'll just start getting some tacks and then move it round, tack it level. Uh, we're on our way there, looking good. That's it, just have to shave a little bit and drop it in. Great stuff. Right, that's the first uh, tacks in and infilled on the tacks there. Now we're going to grind that back, and that's it, we're done because we're out of gas. We've got to get some more Argo Shield, but just about did that patch in time, so that uh, gets us a good bit of work on the boot today. Part of part six, as you know, and um, we'll just do a lot more uh, cleaning up now. So that's gone in nicely, just tapped it around with a screwdriver as it went under tension with the tacks. Just tap that in, let it fold in, and then we got in with the MIG. Clean up now, and then we're done on that patch repair for today. Okay, we are, let me just get my earplugs out. Got my earplugs in there. Okay, sand it down. What do you reckon? Quite neat, mainly invisible. There's a couple of little tiny pins. We expect really only that's only two, two sessions on the weld, and we've got good penetration and a good lock and a good finish there. It's profile, little skimmer thinner in it, uh, filler in it, just a skim round, just to fill the pins. Okay, and then uh, a little knock out there, just where it's warped in a touch. Tap that out, but we're pretty good there. 
so uh, that's that bunghole repaired now, nice and neat and clean, no more rot in that area. So uh, we've done this, done this, just got that one to do, that's all, just that one there. Oh god, have you heard this shit? I hate this shit. Fuck off. Fuck off. Uh, so, where was I? For that crap wrap. There. I think that's it. Maybe a touch, a little bit of a dressing on. I'll probably just. Oh, that's that's pretty good. You just feel some ripples there. So I, it's just needs skim. That's all. That's a really nice thing. It's very solid. No more rot on it. And then we just need to clean up on the inside of it. So. Today's uh, repair sees the boot almost done by this little chink, but I'm actually out of argon. Just did enough welds on here before the argon went, or the argo shield. So once I've boxed that off, that little uh, repair there, I'll leave this down. I'll put the prime on it, we'll leave that till, till later, till the final prep of the, of the whole underside. So at least we've broke the back of it, we've got it in. It's a nice, uh, it follows the profile, looks, looks right. So that's good, and it's uh, it's parallel as they do because it dishes in, but this lifts up. So that's got the angle right. I'm pleased with that. Really good little repair done on that one. So boot floor almost done, and then we need to start getting some metal ready for this area. Now we've got to make this repair. We've got to do a bit of a fold on a piece of metal. We've got to drill out this old piece. It's just part of the inner sill, so we can't replace the whole inner sill because it was good. So we're just going to cut out on this outer lip from the inside halfway down and break this piece out, reattach the jacking point then I'm going to drill in this lip and then we're going to slide a piece of metal in with the angle bent into it here and then we'll plug weld through there then sand them down we'll plug weld through there and then all we need then is the end cap for the wheel tub housing this piece with the hole in it for the uh, inspection bung then that area is done don't anticipate more than half a day on that repair, if that, so that would be that. Once I've done that, um, I would start heading to the front then, and we'll start looking at getting this sill spot welded on, and then we'll start heading out to the exciting bits up at the front. So uh, that's where we're up to at the moment on uh, on that day. I'll put a bit more footage on this uh, episode for you now. Um, I'm going to try and up the tempo a bit, get it a bit more interesting. I know this is pretty much just got to go through the motions and do this work but it's handy to know if you if your wheel tub's saveable and that's how you can do it your copper bar screw through Be, the only thing i've got to say is really really careful when you grind back because you can end up grinding back and blowing through it with a the grinder then so you've got to just get a sense of the depth and just try and keep your grinder only to the places where the weld's gone don't let it skip over onto the adjoining metal because that's already at its minimum thin thickness so target your area with your grinder, get the tops off the welds and then come in with a crock and just target it until it sits right. Don't be tempted to try and um, grind out grooves because the weld could be pitted and you're trying to grind the pit out while you're taking metal away then. All you want to do is feel it smooth across and then the rest can be skimmed in if you want. Okay, so over on this section, I don't know what I'll be doing next. I'm going to have a break now. Breaking off for uh, an hour break. See you back in a bit. Now, it's time for ice cream. Or maybe some nuts. A cool glass of orange. Why not try a hot dog? A sparkling ice cool Pepsi from the sales girls and in the foyer now. Just a little peaceful shot while we contemplate things. Just checking you out around the workshop and that to see how things are laying. We've got a nice calendar down here, 1980 separate tires. That's got to go on the wall. I'll have a piece of that, please. Some perch will take you through, a little interlude, but go and get yourself a brew and that and uh, everybody at home have a little break from that welding session. And let's go through the tyres, I wonder if it's get, this gets us banned off YouTube. 
January and February 1980. March and April. A little wedding affair there. Oh, gas lamp. Super stuff. Dangerous type of things actually. Leave those unattended that can fall over and cause fires. Looking hot for July and August. And a bunk bed affair September and October. Prison perhaps. Lock up your daughters for that one. And uh, full frontal with some uh, paper shredded stuff out of it. Oh no, it's not, it's the dress. Well, it takes us out of separate tyres for, for a reliable grip on the road. Choose separate tyres. We'll get that on the wall. A bit of, uh, bit of history there. Found in a loft. Let's get back to the car. Oh, this side, yeah. We've, we've got doors going on, everybody. We've got doors. We've got door inspection. I've took you through the doors before. Some of them are the original. We've got two of the old doors off the car. Um, again, all multicoloured, but uh, they're there. They're going to need work. Uh, we've got, have we got any rust? Oh, they're going uh, to need stripping anyway, so we're going to inspect them, but the, these are all good shells. These are good door casings. An orange one. A nice handle, actually. Look at that bad boy. Okay, so we've got doors, we've got the car on its side. Let's have a look at it from this angle. Let's see how things are progressing. Slowly. I'm sorry about that. I'll speed it up soon. We're gonna we're gonna push the front forward soon. Uh, I've been off it for a week actually, just due to some work commitments, but. We're back on. We're we're moving. Don't worry. Part six is you're in your uh, you're in your living rooms and YouTube. I've got some mentions to do too. We've got um, a lot of people to mention. I'm going to go through that at the end of the film. So we're going to go through, scroll through, and do the usual. And let's see if we can find you any more off-road material later on. But we'll get some serious work done uh, in this next uh, 20 minutes of the film. And then we'll uh, we'll chop it up with something interesting. Okay, let me get a break. See you in a sec. Right, I've got some more welding gas, so we're ready to go and finish off this repair here. And then that's the boot uh, finished. And then for today, we are going to go. So we're all right yet there. And today we're going to go down to just. Uh, we're going to make this patch repair and fix the jacking point onto it. And then we'll finally finish off by doing that tail end repair there on the boot, on the wheel uh, tub tail. So a little repair on the boot to finish off and then we'll get the car spun back up so I can get the sill off and then we'll start making the shape. We've got the metal forming tool here in the vise, got, got the vise in. So that's our um, metal forming tool, that just gives us right angle uh, folds. So we can make the piece up. So we'll cut and measure cardboard template and cut and measure and then spot weld that one in. Plenty of gas with a nice new cylinder there from Gas UK, which a good uh, a good way of getting your gas without having an account. So well, small account anyway, not as bad as BOC. So we're ready to rock. I'm going to just uh, get a welder up on the top. I'll just show you how that uh, finished off. Just probably just about do it with uh, MIG without putting a plate in. Let's do that. Okay, I weren't too happy with the some of the thinner metal around here, so I've actually put another little filler piece in. Uh, just taken off from this, so I'll just put a little section in there, only a small piece because it was still it was a bit a uh, bit thin around this area. So that's finished that off that now. So one, two, three, nice tub holes and all the over pinholes repaired. That's the end of that one. So we're out of work, we're out of there. Your tub's signed off for the welding, which is great news. Signed off. All welding on the tub complete. So we now move away from that area. There's no welding down that area. If you look at the back of this, just look how original we are in here. I know I've shown you this before, but we are really good. We're going to be having some uh, rust converter on this. 
and a good epoxy primer is going to be going on. We'll be treating all this. That's, as you know, has been shot blasted back. So I now can turn my attention across here to this, to making this metal shape, which is part of the inner sill actually, but obviously the inner sill's not getting changed. It's 99% it's good. So this just rear, last rear part of the sill, we'll, uh, we'll make that shape now. So car will now flip up uh, this way towards us here. Then we'll take the sill off that's just clipped on. Then we'll start measuring for that shape. Let's get a template made and, and get a nice piece going in here. Let's see how neat we can make that look. Let's try that. All right, we flipped up and now uh, we're now looking at this area. So you can see the damage here. We've got the piece that we're going to find for this to repair that. But before we do that, we're going to repair this inner sill. Now there's your jacking point reinforcing uh, section. That's a good two, three milli piece of shaped steel which lines up with the jack. So your jack goes in like this, and locks in there. That's your jack. It's going that way. Welded on, not spot welded on. That's the long weld on each side. So I've just sliced through it. And I'm hoping I can push this broken piece of metal back here. We're going to keep this part of the inner sill, but we're just going to get rid of it up to that line. And at the back of this, as it as it comes up on a ramp, so you look at the back, it's on, a, on an incline there. So we've just got to start slowly getting this metal out the back so we can make our temp cardboard template to fit in here. Then we can fold the sheet steel and get it in. So I'm just going to finish the cuts off, then I'm going to start pushing the inner sill piece away you can just see it creeping through there that's the outer floor fold so we're going to push this away and then we're going to start breaking it out okay so uh, we just need to get a some kind of tool that's going to be able to cut inside here neatly so just let me have a little tap around now and see what I can cut. right I've evaluated the situation and then I need to take this off it's going to be a neater job if we remove the jacking point Trying to get around the back of it here is a bit botchy. Let's not do botchy. Let's get it right. So, trick is to find the spot welds holding this on. There were some welds at the side, but it's also spot welded. So, I've got to try and find these difficult ones down here. Get this bracket off and clean it up. Then get the plate in at the back. And then uh, re-plug weld that back on. So, I'm going to sand down and go spot weld hunting now. And let's find it. A little tip while we're on. Um, I'm just back from the eye hospital, guess why? These don't make the grade. What happened is the spark got underneath the uh, edge of the glasses because they weren't good fit. Well, they weren't tightly adjusted. Anyway, look at that crappy uh, bracket and strap and stuff. So uh, they can go uh, fuck themselves because they just cost me a two hour trip in A&E to get a, a metal fragment out of my eye. You just don't want to be doing that. Um, it's just not worth it and you know I should have uh, really known better so I've gone for a nice little goodie box I've spent and I think it's worth spending on don't mess about you've advised me to wear gloves on the sharp metal which I normally do I can never find them I can always ever find a left hand glove so there's a new pair of gloves and I've got these bad boys that pop my Bono glasses now these seal right round the edge and come close up to your face, those sparks can't get in. I've got those and also a new uh, full face mask because the other one, the Perspex, had uh, completely gone. So a nice full face mask. That was that was six quid, six fifty, and it's Honeywell. Good make. So that's gonna protect me. I'm not having I'm not going back there. Uh, I've been to the eye hospital before and uh, I don't, that was a few years ago, I just don't want to be doing it, so I'm all kitted out. I've uh, got some more ear defenders because ear defenders and goggles are like cigarette lighters or they're like biros or they're like things that you always lose. So I'm just going to put loads of them around the workshop. I'm not, I've had enough of injuries. So um, a good mask, good goggles. Be careful, gloves, don't mess about because you're just going to be down there and I should know better. So I'm just back from there and I'll tell you what, that was painful. Uh, it's just what you don't want is uh, iron filings or angle grinder spark things in your eyeball. 
and don't take chances thinking you've got goggles or just glasses because the spark will bounce around the edge of the goggles I'm telling you now it'll find it eventually if it doesn't get you straight away it will do so get some goggles that fit right tight up and preferably a full face mask as well double protection it's got to be done right let's get these off now that's the safety lecture over with for your reference and information if you are doing this job you don't know where your spot wells are I've just hit that hit Hmm? I just hit that one bang on just look there because I couldn't see it so if you're doing this at home we're one up there okay so we're starting to go on that bracket we're going to keep it clean so let's try and find the next one I believe there's one here and I think there's one there can you see that the camera actually picks it up better than I can see it I reckon that's one what do you think probably only done three because it's such a big piece of metal and big weld I'll hit that one next. I'm on with the this drill bit this time. Hold on while it comes across into your view. I'm on that one. So we're going to go for this one next. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if I, I botch it up or not. Next spot weld for the jack support bracket or the jack uh, jack. Right, I think we got it bang on with that one too, that was a lucky hit. You can now see the brackets rocking. I've got the screwdriver just at the edge there. See how that is now pivoting on the last remaining weld, which is probably this one. So I'm going to try and snap it. I'm just going to keep on wogging that till it gets looser, because I don't know where else to hit it. But that's the jacking point bracket starting to go. Once you've got a pivot on there, you've got a chance of working it you can start to just move it at least it's not rock solid like it was before so just going to keep on loosening that up and hopefully this will uh, pop there might be one more here perhaps I don't know I'm just trying to tease it off anyway so we'll uh, cut to it when we're off there but we're looking okay we're starting to go and then we can inspect that uh, metal behind it so you see that just rocking just see it on screen there trying to find that last hidden weld or maybe there's two more I'll tease it off uh, let's just see what let's just see what happens cut to the, the finished result hold on all right I know there was one there I found that one that's given us a very loose situation now one there one there three along the bottom the one in the middle is just catching we'll see that off in a sec so looks like there was six three Four, five, seven, six or seven. This side, the spot welds have just gone because, well, you can see where they've just ripped off. So let's go in at the back for you. One there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven spot welds holding your bracket on. And you can just see now, if we take you in, well, the exposure might not get it for you. You can just see right in the middle of your screen there, the last of the spot weld. So let's take that off now. There you go. There's our lovely, pretty good condition. Look at that. That's tidy, that. So a bit of cleaning up there for this bracket. Put a nice bracket. So that's your shape if you're ever remaking one. This is a, as close as you're going to get. That's the shape, a flat piece of metal stamped out in the middle there. I think Mike's good at making these, he's, he's the man, the metal man. He can make these nice, but uh, we're okay, we've got that. So look what we've got. Plenty of metal still left, we'll, we'll tidy those up. Um, I did go back to the normal spot well drill bit. I think there's no doubt about they're the best. Okay, the one, try it, give it another chance, but I don't like it. They're easier to get going on the pilots, these flat bits as well. So we'll be looking at putting that back later. We'll be using the uh, chassis holes reference to make sure we get our jack in exactly the right place. And don't forget, before we put this on, we'll be putting the sill on to guide it, to make sure that everything lines up. You don't want to put that on too much to the left, too much to the right, and then the sill, the indentation on the sill won't match this scalloped piece there. So remember that for later on. So clean up that bracket but before we do that we need to assess the size of our piece of metal that we're fitting in here and whereabouts we're going to join it 
so I think we're going to cut it along the profile of the floor pan halfway down and create a butt weld which curves up here like this so that'll be the shape and the metal will come round and there'll be a right angle on it to fit nicely into the there's some spot welds here we're going to have to take out next they should be visible from the inside which they are so let's take those out so we get a good clean original factory connection here's our spot welds to take so let's get them off now and then we'll start to move that back and then we'll cut it uh, do a couple of cuts just get the right shape I'll show you what I'm going to do for that in a sec this is going to look really clean when we're done ok so I'm going to cut down here now with the angle grinder with a slit, slitting disc on it to get this metal off and then I'm going to then gonna make a second cut after that's off halfway down to make a butt lap join a butt join here. I'm going to join the metals using this edge of the floor as the joining piece for the repair section rather than cut out all of this piece because there's nothing wrong with that. So we're going to put a piece in that's that shape. So first to get it so we know where we are we're going to just cut down looking on this side using that as the guide for the cutting disc. So I'll slice that off now. Right so I've got a lot of the excess metal off and I'm, what I'm heading for is a, a lip just here so there's a bit more to trim so our piece of metal that when it comes in lands on that lip there for our, our weld now we've got a tricky area here we've got to get this remaining piece of this angle out from behind here just enough now I'm not going to get it from the front of this I'm not going to get it from behind what I'm going to do is take this top as much as I can off it now we're going to use the croc sander and sand in so thin that it just snaps off there's a gap at the back so when our replacement panel comes in now it's going to go behind where the original piece will so you'll have an old piece of metal sandwiched but it's the only way you're going to do it so it's going to still look neat so croc sander in or belt sander in and just file this because nothing else will get in here uh, unless I use my die grinder but let me just see what the croc sander can do or the belt sander sorry to remove the last of this piece and then create this lip here this 5 mil lip all the way along and then we're ready to start getting our cardboard template so belt sander now Okay, I've got the template ready now, so just a little uh, notch out of that one to slot behind here. Sorry, I'll go slow on that pan. A not out, notch out of this one to slot behind here, and then it, that's going in. Then it's got to draw on the inside now that profile line. I'm going to leave the top of the piece of metal higher up, and then when I fit the sill, I'm going to trim it so it's perfectly level with the sill. So we'll leave this oversized and then just uh, mark it when the sill's in position that way it'll be perfectly parallel with the sill rather than guessing it so the main thing we want to do is get this profile here so the metal sits on this little ledge I've made here and the back corner drops in behind there so get the mark on I've actually drawn the cardboard the wrong way but it doesn't matter it'll still show on that mark so uh, I've got a pen there now I'm going to mark up the profile I'm going to get a piece cut and then we're going to start getting that fold on the edge of it and we'll feed it into here. So let's get the template cut to shape. You can see how the metal is going to sit on here for us. And then there's our fold going down to create that original factory look. You're not going to, you're not going to know. So that's going to look really clean from there. So I'm going to put this, take this across to the steel. There's the sheet metal folder. Simply put a fold in to the metal there. I've overdone that so I can trim this uh, end piece just how I need it. So um, that piece of metal there is going to suit, so we'll get that marked out now and cut that down. Right then, that's the metal just tapped into position, you can see how that uh, fold works there, and then how it follows on the inside of here. So we can now get our weld along here, and get that fixed in position, ready to put the, um, the jacking point back on once we've cleaned the jacking point up. What I'm going to do is just get a plug weld in at the bottom where it was originally welded so we'll go back into that I'm going to leave that then and just put some tacks on the bottom and then before we put the final plug weld in at the top I'll put the sill back on then clamp this to the sill then weld that then that means that's perfectly um, in line with the sill that way then we'll draw a line when the sills on then slice the top off it so that's that uh, inner repair piece getting ready where's our um, jacking point gone we've got it there it is 
compass would be cleaned up and then that'll be sitting back on top of there once that's trimmed to the right height okay so let me just get a tack in now and we're ready to start working this piece of metal in shape it's going to look all the old factory this is so plug weld ready to go in there our, our first plug weld of the whole car because this is the first time we've actually plug welded so welder fired up and then, yeah you'll see a nice weld in there in a sec right so i've got a plug in there now and just look how we're going to be aiming for the flush fit this side so we're nice then bringing it up again tacking where it's flush and then we'll clamp it again here a couple more tacks and then trim the top off just oversized then get the seal in okay so uh, another weld there now just tack welds on this so i've got the clamps on there now just to bring it in nice and snug you can see how snug that's starting to look and then we'll finish off the welds so more welding going on with the clamps in position now okay so with the, the metal in place and only the one tack at the end uh, leaving that open tap this across then bring the locking pliers in so with a sill fitted flush here original positions for the factory so we know that's in the right place everything's in place let's just check the end so we're right up to the end there so we know the sill can't go any more forward it must be in position so that gives us the top cut line for this plate now so we can get that nice and parallel I'll mark that with a pen carefully hit it with the angle grinder making sure everything's as it should be which looks like it is and then we can get that other tack in there and then we're we're looking really good along this repair and that's going to bring part six to a close <clears throat> once i've got that on it's getting a bit late here now so i'm going to trim that off and then um, we'll resume well I'll, I'll tell you what i'll do i might fit this i'll get this cleaned up we might refit this okay so that gives us something nice uh, to finish off on so i'll clean that up and then um, weld it plug weld it back on and then it should be landing around that area and then we can step sit back and look at that repair and say right okay we're ready in part seven to finish off on the uh, by making fabricating a piece of metal just to fit in this area we can either fabricate or i can retrieve one off a, a scrap wheel tub which i might have the chance of doing okay so i'm just trying to get you in the light there now it's going to be pitch black. Let's see if the camera can adjust itself. Not really. Sorry about that crap view there, but it's a piece of metal to be made to fit in that shape. See it a bit better there. So that will see us in part seven for that because we're getting time's getting on tonight. So a line along here to cut on first. And then some more welding to go. Let me get that line on and get that cut in. Ready, 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 ready. So I hope you enjoyed part six. Just a little bit of old technical still. And, um, <clears throat> we've got something special for you coming up just after this. Uh, we finalise where we are. So you can see uh, the welds have penetrated through there. We'll just dress those up. And there's the corner, and then we'll go take you around the inside. I've got the sill uh, just tied up with the clips. And you can see how nice, nice that is there. Everything's perfect. Okay, so down on the inside you can see the finished product. You can't tell it from the original. So uh, it's indistinguishable now. Lovely panel in for uh, the factory repair. Around that side, there you go. There's a little bit to trim off the top as it finishes round. But you can see where it, the panel slotted into that little piece there and made it look factory. Can we get you in? Let's try and get you in little bit of weld to just clean up there with a the file we'll get in and do that that'll be seam sealed of course so let's take off the um, parts now clip that we could bring out the jacking point whoops I banged the camera sorry that was the mole grips hitting the camera there that just slides out now that needs some cleaning up and some prep I've started cleaning that up 
but I just want to finish off getting the rest of that rust off it there okay so we'll just get that uh, cleaned and primed we'll, just, we'll have to be well through primer for this and then that goes in if I take the sill off now for you I think I can do it uh, I don't think there's anything holding it on it's such a good fit this sill it's hard to, to actually get it off once it's on it sort of snaps itself shut it's quite quite tight there we go take the sill off move those crisps right that sill fits nice and snug in there doesn't it okay pop that on top and then we can see how that lug that we left with that other type of spot well cutter was handy because it acted as a locating lug for this we can see where that fits and how that's going to go together so that's great so we're all ready to go there on that repair just a little bit in the corner to trim off level with that and then that's it we're done so hope you enjoyed part six um not much else changed so no point walking you around but i uh, switch off the radio and we're out of here P planet rock at the moment Air guitar coming soon, probably in the next part. Um, yeah, got a call to go and look at a Mark III that um, someone's restoring, and they've asked me to kind of go and have a look to see the condition of it. So we're going to pop down there uh, later on and have a little look at uh, this Mark III GT located not far away from here. Uh, can we go and have a little inspection and see? Uh, if there's anything we can help them with there so uh, we're off to now enjoy this following clip uh, let's go and see what this GT holds in store and over and out for part six as I say more of the same but we're getting nicely there we're getting nicely there. let's summarize what we've got come on let's just have another look at that, look at that. That's, that's just nice that's what you want that's how to fix that area properly okay I mean you could argue that I could take this completely seamless on the inside but it is on the sill uh, inside the sill I mean, from the outside you're not going to know from the inside you'd know that that was repaired but does, is that important I don't really think it's worth going that far so that, that that's seamless it's a good uh, weld it's a good join we could seam seal it how about that how about we seam seal that little area and once that wax goes in from this end bung here once this is all fixed you, it's where your uh, lance goes in for your wax for your dinner troll all this is going to be covered in, in nice dinner troll as well so we want to make sure we get that um, but it's important to prime this area and get this nicely rust proofed because you can see that it uh, could trap moisture there it could get in from the outside and under and down okay so i might seem to seal that in as well okay so enjoy the uh, the investigation to go and look at a mark III gt now we say over and out Thanks for all the comments everybody, I haven't got time in this video to mention everybody, I might whack a clip in at the end, we don't know, but it's over and out for now, it's been a long day, gotta go, gotta go. You might think, how the hell is it daylight when I go and look at the GT, haha, <laughs> that's because I already know I'm going there because I've already filmed it, but I was just whacking it on the end, that's the uh, creative process, because there's bound to be someone that says, uh, oh yeah, it was late at night and then daytime at the GT, don't you worry about that. That's artistic license. Go and have a laugh at this. It's uh, he's allowed us to he's allowed us to involve humour. Let's put it that way. See you in a bit for this clip and have fun. See you in part seven. Over and out. That's just a sample of the films to come. You can't please all the people all the time, but we hope we'll please most of you most of the time. Anyway. See you soon. I have an oil drum which is in better condition than this. It's a full restoration undergoing. Now, if you want to see what rust is like on a Mark III, then a have a look at this bad boy and pop. We take you for the break now in the film. Just come and see Mark's Cortina, which he needs a decision on whether or not to uh, restore it so uh, in the days of filler fiberglass and bits of bent aluminium 
it's actually galvanized he's actually been welding gal you can see the yeah that's hard stuff to weld gal it doesn't have to make some fumes oh, that's nice <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> shit oh christ how can i be polite about this uh, <laughs> fucking hell that was a chassis fork <sighs> That's solid, but it's, oh, it's copper pipe. The hell's that doing there? <laughs> what the fuck? He's got the brake pipe going through the chassis fork for some reason. I don't get. I've never seen that before. Motocraft shocks there, Mark. That's worth a fortune now. The original Autoflex shock absorbers. We have an imaginative use of a one milli plate. There'll be there'll be there'll be nothing there. It's completely built. Sam, did you say there was a where's that uh, heart? Oh, there it is. The resin. Yeah. Oh, the whole of this was got the resin. And here we have a GT. Here we had a GT. Yeah, spin it. Will it spin? Yeah. All the way. The oh no, it'll only go one way, won't it? Yeah. Well, I got to the other side. Stop it going too far. I'm surprised actually that. Uh, geez. I'm surprised that it actually supports it without yeah. the whole thing just like these just ripping off. It's uh, it shot to shit, Mark. Oh my god! I bet you if you just did. Oh, the other one came off actually. I pulled the other one. Oh, that's just. No, they're just cover sills. I had those. They're not. It's not the original sill though. It'll just be tacked on top. But. Your bottom of your B post has gone. Yeah. On that side, we know there's nothing left of that. I mean, it's very crumbly. That. Oh, oh dear. I've broke it. Mark. I've... <laughs> oh, I don't like that. Oh. I wasn't really going to use that. <laughs> that <laughs> was the best bet. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. Just, I mean, if it was mine, like, I'd just... Would you describe that as shower sealant? Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it certainly flexes like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, this guy's... I think you need to tap the bottom of this boot because it looks very suspicious to me. You need your MOT hammer out on this. There's a lot of work to do on this GT. This is Mark's GT. Mark three. Mark three. Oh, that thing rattling around was actually my hammer. That's not the right route for the fuel pipe. It's kind of like gone the other way. The fuel pipe for some really reason. Weird, it's very weird. Fuel pipe going through the chassis. Oh. Um, tap to, to, to see it because it. I mean, if it's not. It's certainly got filler on it. Be looking at a new, a new tub. I think. Ah, that looks really bad there. There's a plate in there. Yeah, there is a plate there. Yeah. It's a joint. That's why it's been filled to. Yeah. Let's move that joint effect. Oh, that's gone. That's gone through that. That's nice. It's gone through that. Oh. Yeah, the beat. Yeah, it is through. There's, some, there's a big hole there full of full of stuff. You've no boot tub, I'm afraid. Yeah, that'll be straight through and there'll be filler on the other side, or a, a plate then filled. Yeah, it's a plate there. Like if you hit it, it it'll, it'll just hit it that. Because he won't have welded it in, will he? Not welded it. Ah. Oh my god. There's botches all over the. Oh my god, there's another hole. Yeah, there is. Oh, 
Oh, oh, Christ. Oh, oh my God. Guys, bro. This was one of the good bits. This was Would actually... You, did you tell you... Did you think this might be all right? This was Probably. actually one yeah. of the bits where I think it's... Well, yeah. at least I don't need to do the boot Yeah. Sorry. Now, Mark, got some bad news for you. It's past that point, isn't it? Mm. It's uh, no boot floor, mate. You've no boot floor, so you've no boot floor. You've no chassis fork. You've no inner valance. What about your inner? Your inner. There he is. No, that, they're pieces of metal. So you need to replace that, the outer, the inners, the tubs, the outer quarters probably. Uh, you need a whole new boot floor, two chassis rails. You need, oh, the floor's gone. I was going to say, work, you could work outwards from that. But you can't work outwards from that until you replace that part of the floor. Yeah. So, uh you're in a you're in a, a difficult situation. Um, definitely in a scrap scrap situation, if you ask me. <laughs> There's some botches on this. Any more class botches for us to laugh at? Yes. This one's a good one. I, think I just this piece of shelf in this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, that's that stuff you get, like boltable bar, isn't it? And you... yeah. That was actually holding the subframe. So the subframe was just sat in that and it was like, it looked perfect. It was yeah, just, uh, that's the art of the bodger, you see. He... Oh. <laughs> oh dear. That's the art of the bodger. It, this, this, this drove. <laughs> what drove it in there, mate? Did it drive? Yeah, it went. So, uh... Let me see. Inside wise, uh, let's have a look at let's have a look at the, uh, the the fella. I was going to say let's have a look at the fella, or let's have a look at the filler. <laughs> you can just see all the the overplating and the yeah. It's bad. Really bad. That's one rotten shell. I, I, I'm not so sure that it's actually worse than swampy, because I had more to. Well, you had the roof to do it. No, I had more floor. I had, I had, I had, I had quite a lot of the floor left, and I, I worked out from the floor, right? And I worked out outwards. Yeah. And then got the seals on it. So mine couldn't have been as bad as it because you can't even get your inner seals on this because there's nothing to attach yeah, to. There's nothing to actually repair, is there? There's no car to repair. It's like take it down to a nut and bolt. And you'd have to, again. yeah. You'd have, you'd have to completely. You need to get all the crud off it so that you can. We do, you just can't work with it this. It can't even be on the spinner. It needs to be upside down on the roof, doesn't it? I think. I think. Because there'll be nothing to hold it on the spinner when. It's, it's really rotten, Mark. This. There's a lot of botching. I mean, I bet you, I bet you that's full of it. In fact, you can see there. That's just. The one. There's nothing left here, mate. This is just. There's nothing left there. Oh my god. Oh, it's just. It's. There's no, keep going. There's no metal. It's just filler. This <laughs> <laughs> hammer's worth more than the car. I'm not letting it have the hammer. The, the hammer's actually worth more than the car. <laughs> I am about. Look at the state of that. <laughs> it's crazy, man. That is just totally. <laughs> it is filler. It is filler. It is filler. It's not metal. It's filler. You can see. <laughs> and there's nothing there. <laughs> Shit. Your back lights are actually worth more than the entire car. Did you know that they're mint? Them back lights. Mint. I look after them. Then, huh? They are lovely. Get them off and get them saved. GT on an L. Now, actually, I might have found too as well. This back lower valance is probably original. That's actually. It has been welded, I think, or something. No. I think I like butchered on. I 
don't know, that's... Everywhere looks alright until... Until the hammer comes. Yeah. Look at that there, like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's the, there's the fibre fill. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, sheesh! This is bathroom sealant again. Look at it! <laughs> <laughs> Oh that is bathroom sealant because it stretches. <laughs> Very imaginative. Now I've got to give this guy a medal who's done this. But it's we need to talk to the guy. I mean, he needs help. <laughs> I came to uh, offer advice. I had to say, scrap it, Mark. It's fucking gone. It's gone on it. It's, it, it, you I don't can, want to you, accept it, Pete, but it's gone, hasn't it? Yeah, you can do it, but you, you need to probably take... <gasps> Look! <laughs> you found something solid. No. That was solid. That looked perfect. No, no, the, the, the whole floor pan. Uh, you could do it, but it's not worth doing it because of the value. Yeah. That's the problem. It's a Cortina and a Ferrari. It's, uh, it's cost you could do it. <laughs> Anything can be fixed if you've got the time, the facilities, and the money then but well, it isn't worth it so if you want a mark three there's other ones next time you see this we'll probably be in pieces yeah. Yeah, it's a, just off another car isn't it because it's red uh, a lot a lot of work so i think it's going to get scrapped for the video. GT boot applique. Lockable boot lid. I've ordered myself a steady cam. Yeah? Mm, can't wait for that to arrive. Really getting into like a gyro me. Thing. Yeah, really getting into me filming now. Stuff you've got to keep up in the ante, aren't you? Yes, exactly. We're doing good ones, you've got to do a better one. Ah, that's, that's the artistic problem. You've always got to keep something new in. That's why I like putting these little clips in. This will, it's all right to put it at the end of one of my films. This of course clip, it is, yeah. yeah. So we thank Mark for letting us film his project, but we think he might be changing his mind and uh, finding a better way to invest because this is pretty shot to shit. But it was a good lesson in how to use body filler for somebody. Got lots of bits I've restored, which we'll go on the next time. We're mostly left responsibility.